to the sky Never let adventures pass you by Be free and follow your crazy dreams We're living our vision in the RV Come ride with us and you'll be free Not the blocks all picked up. We had to put uh, one block down on the left side just to get it a little more level. Other than that, it was... Uh, it was a good sight. We were supposed to go to lunch with the group today. We feel really bad we're right. not going to be able to. We need to get going. We were going to drive this all tomorrow, which would have made it a little over an 11 hour drive. That's without stopping, which is a little bit too long. Very. And uh, because Thursday morning, Michelle has to be uh, signed in back for work. So we're going to miss out on going to lunch with, uh, the, escapees with the escapees group because it's going north to get to that place where they're going. But there's another range cafe. That's where they're going is range mm -hmm. cafe. It is on our route here in Albuquerque heading on uh, 40. And we're just going to swing by and try that one out. Yeah. <laughs> they're supposed to... oh, go ahead. Uh, just hopefully they're not too busy because it's 1025 so yeah know. and plus they have something you might want they have chocolate coconut cream pie yes and then we'll be in palm springs tomorrow at some point later in the day mm -hmm. so you might have, have to compare the two together oh, since darn. it'll be a dark <laughs> and it's cold it's like 55 here right now it's cold and dreary so it kind of makes me just want to sleep and then when we get to palm springs it'll be 100 degrees again 101 tomorrow and mm -hmm. 99 the next day. We need to get a shirt and hat that says Ret to Go. I know. Do you guys like a hat or a shirt that says I'm Ret to Go? <laughs> this looks like a new place too. Hey, you got an umbrella. A long driving day always requires a good meal and sometimes, of course, a yummy piece of pie. And you know, I think I just might have finally found a very close match to my all-time favorite at Sherman's Deli in Palm Springs, California. Michelle got the veggie omelet, right? Yep. And I have what's called the kitchen sink omelet. I can't see it. Ooh. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Really that good, huh? <laughs> She's like, quiet, let me have this moment. This is very good. I think so, I might have to try it. Nine and a half. I'll try not to get the crust because you can't have the crust. That's pretty good. I know we said this earlier, but we're ret to go. We're really ret to go now. <laughs> we're, we're all jacked up on coffee. At least I am. You're jacked up on more than just coffee. Huh? Oh, sweets. <laughs> yes. I only had like two bites. That was it, really. Pie is for later. Those are big bites. <laughs> suburb of Phoenix. I think it's Glendale. Staying at the Desert Diamond Casino. I think we stayed at one of these. They have a Tucson one. I think we stayed there hmm. before. A year or so ago. And then we're going to do the rest of our trip in the morning to uh, Palm Springs. So we got some time to do whatever. Laundry. <laughs> oh. <laughs> well, we stayed the night at Desert Diamond Casino right outside of Phoenix in a suburb. I think it's Glendale is actually the name of it. Nice, quiet stay among some semis. This casino is really nice, so it's it's free to stay here. You just have to go in and check with security and let them know that you're going to stay here. But this lot right here is meant for semis and RVs. We went inside and ate dinner and played a little bit and ended up getting a free dinner out of the whole thing. Sometimes these casinos really pay off to stay. They, they pay you to stay sometimes. Usually not, though. We pulled in beside this uh, semi last night, 
and then this one pulled in next to us shortly after. There was one uh, Class C that was here. That was it for RVs, but area seems really safe. If you need a place to stay, this would be a good choice. Hi. Hi. <laughs> Didn't know you were still on camera? No. I, okay, Keep, you're still on camera. So are you gonna drive then? Uh, sure, I can drive. Okay, yeah. do you want to? If you don't want to, I'll drive. No, oh, I can. What kind of miles per gallon does it show we got on there? Um, 18.7 oh, yeah. for 448 miles. Cool, so whenever I said, I can't remember if I said it. Oh, we, we were in Albuquerque because we fueled up in yes. Albuquerque because yeah. it was much cheaper yeah. in the area that we were at, like which we were surprised. Three. 396 or something? 396, yeah, that's about the cheapest we've seen for a while. But yeah, we went 448 miles and uh, averaged 18.7. Much better than what we've been used to. Oh yeah. The RV Life app, they did an update recently and like for us, we don't use the RV directions because we don't really need them with our height. We just watch if we go <laughs> come up with something that is uh, on an, a side road or something that a bridge is, yeah. seems low, we just make sure. Now on the new update, allow route changes. Uh, we always select that for us. Uh, because we're not using RV directions. Then you hit start navigation. Well, there's this little green icon here. Actually, Michelle showed me this. I didn't even realize they did this. And uh, you hit that. And then right here in a small print, <laughs> use other map provider and then continue to other providers. But that's where it's hidden at. All these GPS apps, it doesn't matter. Even the Garmin's, they all have their quirks. Just keep them updated and, and they slowly fix their little quirks here and there, sometimes. Mm -hmm. All right, you're ready to go. We do, we were looking to see what kind of things we could stop and see along the way. There's a few different things and we'll see. We'll see how much time we have. We kind of want to make sure we get a decent site today since we're going to be in Palm Springs for a while. But uh, we got a lot of options with this uh, smaller rig, so that's that's always a good thing. I'm ready to go. How about you? I am too. How about you guys? Are you ready to go? Mm -mm. Come on now. Cross that eye. <laughs> Look at them lips. And go. Yeah. I'm ready to go <laughs> <Yeah>. too. <laughs> so I'm ready to go. See it clear when the shadows are lit. I'm ready to go. Pulled in to get fuel right before uh, Blythe. Uh, so it's right before the California border because you know what happens to the fuel prices once we get to the California border. But then we're gonna stop in Blythe, uh, California, right there on the border. We ate there one other time it was really good. Kind of a fast foody place, but very, very good tacos called Albert Tacos. It has four and a half stars online and it does live up to that. We remember them being very, very good. All right, waiting on a semi here and we'll go pull up and get fuel. Boy, we ran the fuel down to uh, the reserve tank too, so <laughs> we're filling up at a great time. Yeah, this is uh, one of the TSD places we get our fuel cheaper. Processing, enter control number. The other day we filled up, and I can't remember what the prices were, but we saved uh, about $11 on that fill up, and it was only a half a tank that uh, we went ahead and filled up. So all this uh, savings really adds up. Also, if we're like in a town area, we check Gas Buddy at the same time. Sometimes Gas Buddy will be cheaper than uh, than any place that, that with TSD or open road. If you're unfamiliar with what TSD is, open roads, we have a link on our uh, webpage, liveinourvision.com. Go to our resources page and then look at the TSD logistics. And uh, then you can sign up for it there. Uh, the Gas Buddy, that's just a free app that you can get on your phone. $92.77, and that's from uh, filling it all the way from vapors. <laughs> yeah, we were on yeah, reserve. <laughs> we're on the reserve tank. We still had plenty of, plenty of fuel to make it a little further.
Welver Tacos, here we come. This is the place, guys, so if you're coming through Blythe, it's just right off the interstate. Flower shell. Oh, you got a flower shell. Yep. Traveled by here many times, haven't we? Yeah. We never have stopped by here. So let's see if this place is worth stopping. Right along the interstate, if you're coming from uh, in between Blythe and uh, the Coachella Valley. In January 1942, just a month after the United States entered the war, German troops under the command of Field Marshal Rommel started pushing toward Egypt, threatening the Suez Canal. The British experienced great difficulty fighting an enemy well-versed in the use of tanks as a tactical weapon in the desert. It was evident that the U.S. troops would have to engage in a desert campaign and there was no background for such an engagement in the history of U.S. warfare. On February 5, 1942, Lieutenant General Leslie J. McNair Chief of Staff General Headquarters gave his approval to a plan developed to stop Germany's advance in North Africa. He designated Major General George S. Patton Jr. to establish the Desert Training Center for the purpose of training men and machines for action under the harsh conditions of the African deserts. He and staff officers flew over a vast expanse of sand and brush weeds in Southern California and portions of Arizona and Nevada. Later, he covered much of the area on foot and on horseback. He decided this was the place to build a force for desert combat. The area selected by General Patton in the California and Arizona deserts encompassed approximately 18,000 square miles, making it the largest military installation and maneuver area in the world. Patton described the area chosen as, the best I have ever seen, it is desolate and remote, large enough for any kind of training exercises. The first troops to arrive at the Desert Training Center described it as the place God forgot. It was eventually to become the training ground for more than a million troops in several armored divisions and 13 infantry divisions. Roosevelt agreed to British Prime Minister Winston Churchill's plan to attack the Axis powers in North Africa, where they were weaker but American troops would need training and conditioning to contend with the special demands of desert war. General Patton arrived, and the DTC became operational in early 1942. Four days later, he and the troops took their first desert march. Within 15 days, all units at the center had been on a desert march. Within 23 days, he had conducted 13 tactical exercises, including some with two nights in the desert. That was really interesting. That was very interesting and uh, would take longer than an hour if you wanted to read everything. Like oh me. gosh, there's a lot to read in there. <laughs> I couldn't read everything. If you like history, it's a definite stop. Uh, a lot of stuff that I don't remember learning in school. Of course, I, I never paid attention. <laughs> As like now. It is a little bit higher cost than what we originally yeah. read. Yeah, oh, that's right. It's $16. <laughs> it's 15 a piece. I thought I paid 16 No, 15, 15. a piece. Um, senior and military discounts, though. If you're a history buff, stop. It's very interesting. Yes. Uh, this brings back memories when we let Vinny go right there, when we sold oh, Vinny. I know. Often we send vans, we're right here at the entrance, we yeah. send vans over to this wall because they're kind of protected from the wind and stuff. However, this laundry room and restroom C is closed right now, and we don't expect it to open oh. until Friday this week. So you may just want to head over to, to one the 30 of the places amp area. Over here, 30 amp, yeah. 
everything here is open from 9 to 9. That would be the pool, the lodges, uh, the ranger station, and let's see. There's free Wi-Fi in the pool lodge or the recreation. We've never been to this side before. This is the 30 amp area. And uh, the other times we've been here, we've always been over to the 50 amp. Put our sign out. They give you this laminated one to use here. Well, we got our site. And guess where we're going now? We're going to go eat, but guess where it is? At the same time, they all said Sherman's Deli. <laughs> okay, but which one? They're, they have two locations. Oh, good grief. <laughs> we're at Sherman's Deli. And gosh, well, she took are. off without me. <laughs> Getting excited? I am. <laughs> This is called the Reuben Stacker, as you can see. <laughs> but it, it has like corned beef and pastrami, and there's sour cream, or sour cream, sauerkraut, and yeah. this, however, is gluten free bread. Yes. Because we are splitting it. So Michelle can have yeah. her dessert. <laughs> yeah, I'm not eating it. Okay, all this. I'm having a brownie. <laughs> Here they are gluten free brownie. Which looks awesome. It is very good. And then a drum roll for. Bavarian coconut cream pie. Mm. <laughs> I always forget how good it is till I have it again. Okay, so it's amazing. So now comparing that to the one you had in in uh, Albuquerque. That, that one was Kepler. very good too. But, but I still think this might be just a smidge better. I think Maybe so too. 0.25 better. Yeah, I tasted <laughs> them both. And yeah, I agree. Uh, oh my god, it's warm. <gasps> they gave you a warm one? I've never had it here. I've always bought one up there to go. Okay. Bam. <laughs> Especially for gluten free, my god. That's a nine. Two happy little piggies right here. <laughs> Two piggies? That's funny. Yeah. I'll speak for myself, sorry. Yeah. Not many people here this time of the year. Thousand Trails Palm Springs gives you these little signs to tape to your pedestal so when you're gone, nobody takes your sight. The week is over and we're off to attend our very first Adventure Van Expo. This is the last show of the 2022 season located in Big Bear Lake, California, which is about a two hour drive from Thousand Trails in Palm Desert. Tomorrow, we are having a meet and greet at the Gretsch RV site at the show and excited to meet everyone. Do you like this place? I do. I love mountain towns. I do. I like, I think I could live here. We are in Big Bear Lake, California. We're here for the uh, Adventure Van Expo today. We're gonna stop at a place that was recommended for breakfast called the Teddy Bear Restaurant. See if Michelle can have some pie for breakfast. <laughs> <laughs> they have homemade pie. They do? Mm -hmm. I was just kidding. My breakfast was really good. Mine was too, I didn't even eat it all. Eight that and a half. Was, it was so, <laughs> so much food. 630 Bartlett Road is where this is supposed to be at. But, um, it's supposed to rain today, but there is no clouds so far, knock on wood. I hope it doesn't rain. Don't well, you? I do. Okay, it's, you're there. It's <laughs> 9, 16 and it doesn't start till 10, so we're good. Yeah. We're actually early. Found a parking lot here that a lot of uh, other vans are parked in. Got plenty of room. We just try to find a spot that we can put the back end over. We actually I went back a little too far. Look, it's Santa Land. Santa. Yeah! Yeah! It's me, buddy. I love going to things like this. It's fun. Just check out all the different ideas. This. Not going smaller. Not gonna do it. Checklist is just some helpful reminders, Camp suggestions it. to get out the door. So if you need some suggestions for camp recipes or even gear, accessories, things like that to take, um, things at the campsite, even if you have kids, a little mm -hmm. coloring book. Um, but everything is really made with high quality. All that fits in the box. Huh? All fits in the box. Well, this started at 10 a.m. and it is 10.03. <laughs> People have already showed up ahead of time. But boy, 
It's kind of spread out all over. Kind of check out the area for our meet and greet today. Check this one out. I it's like deck it. Deck on top. Do some sun tanning up there or put the umbrella out and just enjoy a drink at the top. And look who we found. Gretch has the Strata Ion. It's actually the lounge model. Ours is the Tour. And then they also have the Turismo Ion here. Now, last week we showed a little bit of the Torino. This one here is the Turismo. Shorter. This is a 19 foot bottle. Yeah, it is. A lot shorter than ours. Pretty much the same, just shorter. It was a little difficult to video tour some of the models with all the people wanting to view them as well. We always try to be courteous of those that pay to see the shows as a first priority. Wow, nice slide out tray here. Pretty design. Overland Van Project. This setup, this is the B2 carrier from Alvans. Uh, okay. Two one up bike trays on top of here. This is the expedition box. This is a large expedition box. Um, this is actually sold by uh, Backwoods Adventure Mods. Um, and then Alvans modifies it, puts the, uh, the plate on the front of that. Okay. But expedition box, a large one, has an interior shelf, uh, flipping handle here. So this locks. And then you can carry climbing gear, hiking gear, what have you, uh, winch accessories, hatchet, tools for the road, all that yeah. jazz. And then again, it is airtight and watertight. Yeah, that's um, heavy duty. That's I like nice. that. And it locks there as well. There's a lock on that too. And who'd you say makes that again? Um, Alvan's B2 carrier. Okay. And then for your, did you just get these yourself to put uh, on so or, this setup, or a kit? The B2 comes with these bike posts. Oh, okay. Um, they're optional to bolt on or not. If you don't put these on, you can fit a mini Sherpa plate up top of there. You could also stack two medium boxes. Okay. And the additional cargo tray up top of it if you want. Uh -huh. My favorite combination is this setup. I mountain bike a ton, so it makes sense yeah, for me. Yeah. Yeah. Um, but yeah, large expedition box, B2 carrier, bike posts with the two one-up trays on this side. We have this same uh, bike rack, and if you have the fat tires. They have a kit that expands these out wider for your fat tires. This is yeah. one up, bro. Yeah. yeah, one up. Any questions, let me know, guys. Yeah, we, also, we like it. We also have the rack attached swing arm. <laughs> Good, action. Um, I'm Brian from Cascade Van. We're here at the Adventure Van Expo 2022. We're the Big Bear uh, event. This is one of our marketing rigs here, fully kitted out, um, top to bottom, inside and out. This has the bells and whistles and everything you need, nothing you don't for the road ahead. Yeah. Cascade um, Van. Cascade Van, oh, located in Bend, Oregon. Check us out. There you go. Try before you buy. It's on the Ram 2500 chassis. Hi, my name is Adam. I'm with Camp Life Customs. This okay. is a 170 Sprinter 4x4. We have a two-seater, two-bed system going on. This is a queen size, oh, wow. 60 inches wide bed with a retracting system here to make it longer. This is about 80 inches, 83 inches. They even got the Airstream base camp here. Seeing 
is odd because the shower is over the toilet. Yeah. So if you're trying to get close, your knees are going to be hitting the toilet. Yeah. You're, um, there's no, there's really no sink in here. Oh yeah, that's what it's missing. I knew uh, it, something looked weird. But I mean, as far as taking a shower, I've got plenty of room. It's just that you don't, you don't have to use a sink out there. Didn't really expect seeing something like this at a, a van expo. So yeah, the aisle is, there's more room in the aisle, but. Mm -hmm. I don't know how comfortable this bedding would be. Yeah. That's the Airstream Interstate. Well, we're in the Airstream model yeah. right now, the van. I don't know if you can hear me over the music blasting, but there's not much of a counter spot Yeah, here. you got less space in this, this than you do the grudge. Oh, yeah. Same thing with this bathroom. It's even smaller also. It's been a while since we've been in some of the Airstream vans. Uh -huh. And uh, I almost forgot that the quality is less than Gretsch. I, even if we weren't ambassadors for Gretsch, we would say the same thing. <laughs> it is what it is. Don't have the battery power that the Gretsch has, the bedding, the, the seating and everything is, is lesser quality. And then Gretsch puts all that stainless steel all over and the wet bay and all that's all stainless steel. It's a lot of little differences that all adds up. Mm -hmm. We just had our little meet and greet. Thank you everybody for stopping by and to say hi. It's always nice to meet our viewers. Yeah. And something I noticed when looking at some of these van builds like that one, I was looking at the panels that they glued on and you look at the edges and you can see some of the glue. They just didn't clean that up. Some of the glue sticking out. Just little things like that. The Mercedes-Benz chassis that they used was a basic model, a very basic model. It had looked like a radio. I didn't even know they put those old radios still in there. It looked oh. like an old AM radio, but <laughs> it was a really small screen. But what do we have here? What is it that you do here? Yeah, so we're Orion Van Gear. We mainly do roof racks for vans. We're on the ProMaster and Sprinter specifically right now. Okay. Uh, just launched the Sprinter. We're really excited. All our products ship free, uh, fully adjustable around fans, ACs. Uh -huh. If you want to do solar or decking, ships UPS ground to your door. So no freight, which is nice. Easy to install. No crane or cutting needed. Okay. So, very Pretty nice. Plus. Yeah. Anybody need a roof rack? There you go. <laughs> this is the same company of bike rack we use. They've got them on here where he said he puts his e-bikes on there. He's got one on each door. And so this, when you put this bottom one down, you put the bike in there and this cable kind of supports it. And then he says he does use extra ratchets to support it even more. No swing arm, they're already attached to the doors and you just open the door. The bikes are up and down, it takes up less room and it doesn't stick out as far. It's interesting to walk around here and see all these different uh, ideas that people have used. I know. Some are very similar, but one thing that I had really noticed is they look nice, but you can really notice they're not factory professionally done. I don't right. know. Do you know what I mean? Yeah, I've noticed that too, yeah. You get what you pay mm -hmm. for. I haven't seen like one van builder yet that really stands out above the other. Definitely an option if, uh, if price is your thing, but if you want something that's high quality and you got your good warranty and they're going to stand behind it, for us to say, oh, we pick a Gretsch, that kind of sounds biased since we're <laughs> <clears throat> testing the Gretsch, but you got to remember that's the reason why we went with them is mm -hmm. because of the quality and because we had seen the Airstreams, which we thought was good quality too, but we just looked at them here again and it was good to go take another it look. It was, yeah. Another look at them because... We're still very pleased with Gretsch The quality. Airstreams are nice, but you got a smaller bathroom and a lot of the quality in there we noticed wasn't as good. Mm -mm. We're going to have to walk around here a little bit more. I feel like we're missing, I know. missing a little bit here. Uh-oh. 
you stopped when you saw Ann Cookie. I did. I was standing back here and all of a sudden you stopped and I said, you saw that and Cookie. I'm sorry, but I gotta laugh. But all I was gonna do was just keep on a walking and he's like, oh no. We're you stood one. there for so quite a I while. Have a cookie <laughs> and a coffee. Here. She looks so disappointed, we have to doesn't try she? It. We? Yeah. I'll try the coffee. It's cold. And look, it has a coat. little sticker. Packed with love. Really? This is what Michelle wants next, right? Mm -mm. You heard me from Claire over there. <clears throat> Whatever you said, we're not getting it. <laughs> I think we can still work in here, honey. <laughs> no? What we ever said so grateful about everything because we have a working heart and from the very start now we get this far but now it's time for us to stay out until it's late we've come along the way so we deserve it may call it a day and celebrate forget to subscribe to our channel, click that little bell, and hit that thumbs up. See you next week.